No, actually, I did go to UT, and after tuition, I really didn't have a lot of money left to live on and have an apartment, so I, I decided I would find a roommate, and I found this guy named Jeremy who was also just broke. We're trying to find a place to live, and luckily, my grandmother got put in a nursing home, and so, and, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. No, it was okay. She was so happy because she thought we just added onto her house and all of her friends moved in. It was great. She was so happy. <laughs> And we got to move into her house basically for free. Now, the only thing about this old house was it was, it was really old and it was really creepy and it made weird noises, huh, just like my grandmother. Hmm. <laughs> now, Jeremy, one thing you should know about him is he's nervous about everything. And one thing you should know about me is I'm also a prankster. So this is perfect in this old house. So the very first night that we're there, he goes to bed, uh, and he's in his room. What he doesn't know is I slid a baby monitor underneath his bed earlier in the day. Yeah. And I had the part that you speak into in the living room. So I let him get to where I think he's probably almost asleep. And I do something to where he thinks he might have heard something. I go. And I heard, hey, Mike, could you come in here for a minute? I'm like, what is it, man? He said, uh can you just hang out here for a second? Because I, I think I might have heard something. I said, uh, Jeremy, actually, I'm trying to read a book, which, which is a lie, because I've read like four books in my whole life. <laughs> yeah, Pop-up books, mostly. But uh, I close the door, I go back, 15 more minutes pass, and a little bit louder, I go, he goes, Mike, Mike, come here. I'm like, what is it? He goes, dude, there's something weird in here. I said, Jeremy, you're being rude, leave me alone. <laughs> I go back, and at this point, I don't even care anymore. 15 more minutes pass, I can't stand it. I just go, Jeremy. <laughs> and he kicked open the door and he said, never again, Hickman, never again. And I went, oh man, I, uh, oh again, yeah, yeah, again, because this is kind of what we do now. <laughs> well, the next morning, I kind of felt bad about what I had done to him, and so I wanted to wake him up in a very special way. I was a trumpet player in college. So I got my horn at about six o'clock in the morning. I open his door and I go, and I get about that far into it. When I realize what it feels like to have a boot hit you in the side of the neck. <laughs> now the next night, Jeremy was coming home late from his anger management class. Now, on the back of this house is what's called the washroom. It's a long, skinny room, and you gotta go through it to get into the actual house. There's a door you come in, here's the washer, here's the dryer, here's the door that goes into the house. Now, right in front of the dryer is a light that has a chain you have to pull, and it's pitch black, so Jeremy's coming in. I have crouched on top of the dryer like this. <laughs> and he can't even see me because it's pitch black until he turns on that light. And I hear him go for the chain, and as soon as the light comes on, I go, and he said a wordy dirt, and he pulled the chain out of the ceiling and fell back into a pile of what is now dirty laundry. <laughs> it's one of the best moments of my life. And Jeremy moved out. I, uh, I'm still not sure why, because we were just starting to have a really, really good time. 